Hello, welcome back, and this is module seven. Thank you again for subscribing. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about where exactly to invest. I get that question a lot every time I talk to people. Where do you recommend I get started? Is it local? Is it behind your backyard in another state? And you're actually gonna hate me for this, but the answer I got for you is I don't know. You have to figure what works best for you because what I consider to be a great investment for me is not necessarily a great investment for you. But what I can do for you is to walk you through the process of how I got started and selecting the areas that I wanted to invest with or that I was actually able to invest in. So first things first, and you know where I'm going with this, it all revolves around your finances, right? So once you have done an assessment and know how much money you have in your accounts, in your uh, back pocket, so to speak, then you're going to be able to determine how much of a down payment you can put down accounting for closing, uh, accounting for closing costs and um, anything related to that matter. So let's say, for example, I have uh, $40,000 safe, right? So 20% of 40,000 that will make it a house of approximately 200K. So given my amount of down payment, I know that all I can buy is a maximum of $200,000 K. That's assuming that the 40K is not accounting for closing costs and stuff like that. So your chances are you're gonna have to come up with a little bit more money. But for purposes of doing the math and making it easier for our calculations, we're gonna use 40K. 40K down payment, that means uh, you can afford up to $200,000 in a house. And then the next step is to look in what are the areas that I can actually do a search on um, how much money will I get for rent that's gonna help me cover that mortgage payment. So based on prior work that I've done, on average, um, a house that is worth around 200 k the monthly mortgage, depending on your credit history, is going to be somewhat between $1,500 to, 17, uh, to seven, uh, $1,700, right? And then, so based on this amount, you're going to start searching in the criteria of different areas where you can actually rent it out for this much money. So next thing you're going to do, right, now you know that the mortgage payment is going to cost you somewhere between $1,500 to $1,700. So once you've jotted down how much your mortgage payment is going to be, the next step is to actually figure it out what areas have rentals that are going to help you cover that much money. So we saw that the higher range uh, and that rental or that mortgage payment was $1,700. So you're going to have to find something that is at least 20% more of uh, what you're covering. Why am I accounting for at least 20% more? Because you're going to have to pay for property management fee, maybe cover some type of utilities depending on the states that you're in or the type of rental you're willing to do, um, and things of that matter. And mind you, I'm not talking about flippings or anything like that because what I have in my portfolio are pure long-term rentals. Um, the house that I flipped a while back was basically for me to live in, so I wouldn't really consider that some type of uh, real estate investing flipping kind of thing or activity. So, seventeen hundred. Let's account a maximum of twenty percent. That would make it eighteen seventy. Just to round it up, let's say you need at least twenty two hundred and rent. So, what you're gonna do next? You're gonna go to websites like. Zillow, that's pretty generic all over the states. You can also use a website that I like a lot that's called niche.com. So what are the differences between these two? So with Zillow, you're gonna see mainly real estate postings uh, for you to purchase, and you're also gonna learn about the rental market. You're gonna learn about the stats um, in terms of schools, what type of schools live in the area, because uh, if you wanna rent single family homes, chances are you're gonna rent it for a family where they have children and if you're going to rent that apartments chances are they're going to be rented to people who don't have any kids or maybe one max um, again that all depends on the demographics of the area that you're looking into for example a place like New York City it's pretty common to see children living in apartments but if I were to go down to the suburbs down in Florida chances are you're going to see most um, single family homes if, uh, with children as opposed to just a single couple or just one individual living in a single family house and with niche.com, you can actually get an approximate as well of what the rentals are. Um, they're more of an estimate. They're not entirely 
accurate, but it, it gives you a range that it's, um, I'll say 80% close. Again, it's just to give you an idea uh, of what areas you're actually looking at. And it gives you everything from demographics and by demographics, excuse my writing, and by demographics, I'm referring to age, race, type of works, um, type of employment that is really available, the crime statistics, schools. It's a bit more comprehensive than Zillow, but this website, it's more focused on lifestyle um, and what you can get out of a specific area or a rental market as opposed to Zillow, what is, is basically a hub uh, or, or a dump of properties available either for sale or for rental. And another website that you can actually check out, and I think this was actually um, mentioned as part of the elite training, uh, Rental Meter. I used I used to use Rental Meter at the very beginning uh, when I did Elite, but eventually uh, I found Niche.com by accident, and I just happened to like Niche a lot more. It's just a matter of preference. It doesn't mean this is better than the other, and so I will leave that entirely up to you. There's another website that is called datausa.io and datausa it's very similar to niche.com but the difference that datausa doesn't give you uh, the rental average of the area but it does tell you the average cost that a house has been sold now one thing about these sites with niche and datausa.io is they're probably about a year or two lag or behind uh, depending on the area so you're if you're in a very highly transited area such as New York City, San Francisco, um, big cities like Miami or Boston, then you're gonna see the data or the information updated on a more frequent basis as opposed to, let's say if you're in a town like Poughkeepsie or something. And um, so then you, chances are the, the information located there is gonna be a lot more outdated. Uh, so this is how I got started in terms of finding what the good range of properties are. And then once I had this jot down, that's when I decided the market where I wanted to invest in either Florida which is where I have my rentals at and um, Alabama now I'm not saying that you need to invest or you have to invest in Florida and Alabama it's just based on the numbers this is what worked out best for me um, I would love to invest in New York City but based on my calculations on the mortgage and how much money I could put down the amount of rent that I was getting was not enough to cover the mortgage payment and I would have to come up with money out of my pocket to cover that and the whole intent of doing this exercise is to have the properties pay for themselves as opposed to me having to worry about coming up with any additional money um, on the side um, to cover not just my expenses but also any of my investments so um, that's that was the first step that I did and if and only if after all of these numbers make sense, right, and you found a good area, then you have two choices. One is to actually leverage Google Earth, and you can just type in the area or maybe an address of a property that you're interested in that you found through Zillow or any of those websites, or you can just basically take a trip to the area just to check it out yourself. I personally don't travel to my rentals because I don't intend to live there, so I figure if my research went well and I spoke to realtors and, and people who were familiar with the area um, and I checked out all of the stats in terms of crime and schools, there's no need for me to go. Um, I think the first investment that I purchased in Florida with, um, with an investor, um, um, I ended up visiting and that was because I just happened to be visiting Miami and I didn't mind driving up an hour to where my property was located but other than that it just it doesn't really make any sense so once you figure out the area where you want to invest in right you need to determine okay if this is a local investment then you can go ahead and do uh, the steps that I show you in prior videos going to local RIA, speaking to lenders in your local area, and then just manage to build a relationship and learning more about how you can actually qualify for loans. But if you happen to pick an area that's outside of your state where you live in, or maybe even within the same state but too far, then um, I have a, a nice uh, tip for you. You can actually go to a website called 
scotsmansky.com. And if you can't read my handwriting, one, I apologize, and two, don't worry, I'm going to include the link down below in the description box so you can have access to it. But basically, at Scotsman's Guy, it's going to give you a list of lenders in all 50 states. And I didn't introduce you this website before and in one of my earlier videos because I wanted you to get acclimated with speaking in public and reaching out to people and start building that relationship on your own. Remember, real estate, it's all relationship based. Even if you were to buy, bypass that stuff and you were to leverage scottsmanguy.com to call one of the lenders, you will still have to talk to the person over the phone or via email and eventually wind up meeting them. So you will definitely need to learn how to be eloquent and be able to communicate yourself in a very succinct and professional manner. And, uh, and that's the reason why I didn't introduce this before. But if you do, go ahead and, and, and take a look at it. And in fact, I'm going to show you in the screen in a little bit. And uh, basically what you can do with it is that you're going to have access to lender that not only have license to practice um, um, uh, more, to issue mortgages in one specific state, but they actually have the right or the licenses to practice in multiple states at the same time. So let's say if you live in New York and you want to invest in Massachusetts, that lender might be licensed to issue a mortgage in New York and also in Massachusetts. So that's a great way to actually find lenders. And it's not just the traditional lenders. You can find harmony lenders right there. You can actually find uh, the traditional lenders, people who are solely specialized in business lending, and uh, which I'm sure you know, uh, might have talk to you about this, but personal and business credit are not the same. If not, please leave me a comment down below so that way I can create another video just to cover business credit for you. But for the purpose of this module, we're going to just stick to scotsmanguy.com. And uh, without further ado, let me show you my screen. Okay, here we are. So we're going to head and type scotsmansguy.com and it's going to be the third link down. And voila. So for the different type, depending on the types of loan that you're looking for, you're going to have residential and you're going to have commercial. So where I did with Scotsman Guy, I went straight into commercial and then I type in lender search, right? And here's what you're going to see. And you'll probably wonder, well, what if I'm interested in something uh, residential? Don't worry, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through this. So my investment was in Alabama, right? So for the sake of doing an exercise, we're going to do half a million dollar and don't worry about anything else. Just go ahead and click search. Um, the reason why I didn't pre-populate everything else is because I want to see everything that was available out there. And as you can see, commercial lending results. So you have 34 types of different products that are uh, being offered by the lenders out there. So you had anything from a regular purchase, rate and term finance, a cash out refinance, acquisition and development all kinds of loans that you can ever thought about. So uh, acquisition and development, uh, I think that's for, for those who wanna do land development, although don't quote me on that. Uh, all I know is that all I care was number three. So I was looking for anyone who was able to issue a loan in the state of Alabama, and that was also able to do a cash or refinance for what I was looking for, and even do uh, a traditional financing. So if you come in here, uh, they have a glossary with all 34 lines and then you're going to see yes in each of the boxes. So depending on the company, you're going to go ahead and see what type of products they actually offer. So the first one in line is actually Velocity Mortgage Capital. They're actually uh, the lenders that I utilize for the acquisition of my 17 unit in um, Alabama. And they're basically a direct lender and they also tell you what states they invest or they, they partner up with. So they do this na nationwide and with the exception of these states that you see here. And so if you happen to be in one of these states, um, let's say Nevada and oh bummer, you know, they don't loan here, that's fine. Then just go on to the next uh, lender. So the next one is called Five Arch Funding Corp. Uh, they do offer cash or refinance, which was like the, the feature that I was, uh, not the feature, the product that I was looking for. But then you have all these other products that Velocity didn't offer back here. Now I'm curious, so number 11, uh, non-recourse loans. There you go. So they have non-recourse loans. Um, let me see what's 17 over here. So 17, it's automotive loans. So there you go. All kinds. Um, and then what's their uh, minimum and their max, their loan to value. So uh, that's basically what this means is that for them to finance your deals, you're going to have to spend at least 100000 with them. So let's say if you want to purchase a property and your property costs $50,000, 
um, yeah, they're not going to finance it for you. And the beauty is that um, they go for large amount because it is considered a commercial loan, right? So they can finance up to $5 million, $20 million. I know if you're a first time investor, these is probably, um, the numbers probably look outrageous for you because you're trying to figure out, wow, like, I was capped before by a traditional uh, mortgage at 200000 because it's as much as I could afford and my um, given my salary or my income. When it comes to commercial loans, they don't care about your income. They actually care about how much the property can produce. So if your property can produce up to $1 million a year um, and revenue and rental revenue or whatever is it that you, you, you utilize that property for, they they will finance up to how much they they view the revenue is for. Uh, so you have uh, the list of all of these lenders and how much it's required for you to put down. So with Velocity, the company that I use, they had a 75 LTV, which means I put down 25%. Uh, Five Arc, they actually have a much more flexible um, term, which is 90 LTV. That means you only have to come up with 10%, and you can even finance a property that costs $75,000. A lot more flexible than uh, what Velocity did. So basically, let's say, for example, if your property costs, let's say, 500000 right and 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 you have a total of five apartments in that complex that you were trying to buy then you just make the cut but then if you have let's say 10 then that means each of those units or each of those properties cost 50,000 so in that case velocity will not fund it for you because the way they do it is that when they divide it up that means the individual price of each of your property is not going to meet their criteria, which is a minimum of 100000 per property. Let's see. So and there you go. That's basically in a nutshell. Uh, you'll have the contact information uh, of each, um, each of the lenders that you see here. And just simply reach out to them, explain them, hey, I have this acquisition that I would like to get, and it's located in this. Give them as much information as possible just so that they, they know right from the get-go if they can help you or not. If not, again, don't take it personal. Don't feel bad. This is a long, long list of lenders. As you can see, if one doesn't work, you have the other, and so on. And it's the same thing. So if, if you're not interested in commercials, then you can go back and do residential and then look for a, rent, a lender search. And you just simply come in here and you can go ahead and like look at the type of um, lending that you are looking for. So, for example, if you are looking for FHA loan, that's when you need a 5%. Uh, then you come ahead and do this. If you're looking for branch opportunities, I believe it's just a bank that, uh, that you can just go in and and just walk into. I'm actually curious to see how this works because I've never checked the residential site. Um, I've only go straight to the commercial site uh, due to the number of properties I was trying to finance. So you come here and then you hit Alabama uh, and oh voila same thing. So you have all of these banks that you can leverage um, and then they're going to tell you where they lend nationwide. This is awesome. Um, and then the type of loans that they offer. So minimal annual income. This is how much you need. Um, the contact and then the type of loans, number five, 12. Uh, wow, this is amazing. Um, I'm actually discovering this for the first time and I'm loving this. This is a lot better. I mean, luckily for me, for my um, my first couple of deals with single families, the realtors that I was working with, they already had a power team and they knew what mortgage lenders to use and they were very, very resourceful. But now I know that if eventually I hit a cap with those lenders, then I can actually come here and try to find a lot more. Um, so this is this is a great tool, as you can see. Um, that's not to say or that's not to eliminate that you will stop going to the local branches nearby you so you can practice your, your speaking skills. Uh, this is something that you will continue to have uh, to grow and improve. Uh, even myself, uh, I need to get rid of some of the ahs, as you can see. But uh, this is a great tool if you don't really know where to start out of state. Like if you have a house uh, outside of your residential state, let's say in my case, New York, and then I want to invest in Alabama or Tennessee, uh, chances are you're not going to look at any no local branches unless you hop on a plane or your car and you just drive over there or flight over there. Uh, so this will cut you a lot of time. This will help you save a lot of time. And uh, yeah, you can learn how to build relationships over the phone. And then by the time you flu fly down there if it's even necessary because nowadays you can do everything electronically but in the event that you do go down there then you already have a rapport uh, built up with this person this mortgage lender and um, then the next deals are going to come in a lot easier so now back to the video 
And that's what I have for you today. Hopefully you find that information valuable. Again, I'm sorry, I don't have an area to tell you exactly where to go and invest, but everything has to work for you. Not everyone has the same amount of savings. Some people have more, some people have less. And all you gotta do is just to do the research do the work and uh, get familiar with the system with um, how to do the research uh, that's gonna uh, of processes that are gonna work best for you and then just go on and uh, if again if you like this please hit the subscribe button and feel free to leave me a comment down below with questions or comments I would love to hear what your thoughts are and uh, definitely create more content down the line if you find what I have to share valuable for you and until then I'll see you